Hello everyone and welcome to the first video on reversing with IDA. Today we are going to discuss code cross references and data cross references. Now first of all let's discuss what cross references are. Now cross references are most commonly referred to as xrefs are used to identify references that is usage call or a declaration of a particular function string variable uh, across the disassembly. For example, if you've identified a function which can help you uh, identify active internet connection status, maybe you want to see what other functions are calling that particular function or that particular API call. Here you can view all those functions which are referencing that function using cross references. Now cross references are of two kinds and I've discussed those in, in the start of my video that is code cross reference and data cross reference. Code cross references are used to identify relationships between function calls, declarations, or maybe jumps. Here you can see an example that I've highlighted on my window where the code cross reference to this particular sub function, which is 404224, that is uh, the subroutine at this particular address, has a code cross reference of subroutine 403F1B plus CC, an arrow, and a letter. Now let's break it down. Code cross reference is a label which is followed by a colon and it has a subroutine name. Now the subroutine is at the address 403 FNB. Then an offset is added to the base address of the subroutine. Now this added offset compiles a new address. This new address is where this function which is 404 224 is actually referenced. We, go, we are going to see that in a practical example next. Now next there's an arrow. The arrow suggests that the referenced or the code cross reference is actually at a lower address than where I am currently standing which is where currently my cursor is which is at 404 224 and if you can see that 403 F and B is much lesser than my current address. It's why the arrow is at an upward direction, which suggests that the cross reference is at a lower address. The letter P has a special meaning, and we're going to discuss more attributes about cross references very soon. So first of all, let's see what uh, what other code cross references this particular function has. To list cross references, you can press X on your keyboard, and it's going to show cross references to this particular function. You can see the same information which was written in the code xref label or the comment. It says that the address is this for the three and B at an offset of CC and it is what calls this function. And if we can go ahead and see that I'm simply going to press the function call and by adding CC to it, we can see that the particular function is being Called. Uh, if we can add CC to it, all right. So I believe this is over here, right? And I'm simply going to go back to it by pressing the function name, and we are back to it. Now, this is a code cross reference. And similarly, a data cross reference uh, is what is how we can actually track data being accessed or written throughout the disassembly or the binary. For example, you might find an IP address being referenced in a few functions and you might want to see what other functions are referencing that IP address. Using XFs, you can easily identify that information. Now, we have seen how to list basic cross references by pressing X on the keyboard. Similarly, CTRLX, which is Control X on Windows, shows us cross references to the address and this is the address regardless of where my cursor is. Now what do I mean by where my cursor is? For example, if I am at this address, this is the address, right? Now, but my cursor is selecting this particular identifier, which is a D word at this address. Now if I can press X on it, you will see, you will see that the X refs are now pointing towards the D word itself and not the address. But if I were to press Control X, you can see the difference. 
And what does it actually mean? It means that now we are viewing cross references to the address and not the cursor's location or the cursor's selection or that identifier selection. This is the difference. Similarly, we might want to identify uh, maybe code cross references from this uh, particular uh, address. That is, uh, does this address have any cross reference or does any cross reference goes from this particular address? So we can press Control J on our keyboard and we can see that this uh, particular uh, instruction does indeed reference a code cross reference. That is, the D word or the data is actually accessed from this particular address. So we have seen three examples, control X for cross references to the address. We have seen control J for cross references from the address. And we have seen X, which is to list all cross references to the selected identifier. And these are identifiers, labels, right? Now, we discussed the function, uh, how a code cross reference is uh, is visible to us, right? That is a function name, the offset, the direction, add digit exists. And finally, uh, there's another letter, for example, P over here. What you can see in this example, this is J. And another different example, it might be something else. But let's stick to these two for now. So, these are types of cross references. And as per Hexray's uh, documentation, uh, there are 13 types of cross references. However, we are going to, on going to only discuss a few of them over here. Now, for data offsets, or uh, sorry, for data cr uh, cross references, we have R, which is for read access. That is, the data is being read from a particular address. We have W, which is for write access. That is, data is being written at that address. We have a small j which you can see over here, which suggests that this is a near jump. Now, a near jump is an intra-segment jump, which suggests that the code that this particular function is jumping to is in the same code segment as the identifier. And we are currently in the dot text segment, right? Similarly, the small p is a near intra-segment call. It suggests that the function call is in the same code segment as the one we are currently in. Now these are the types of cross references. You are, might also come across a different cross reference for type, for example, R or O. O is simply uh, meaning that the address for that particular offset is taken and there's no read or write operation there. It's just an address which exists and holds that data in it. All right, now uh, we can see, by the way, that there's just one code cross-reference here. Uh, it, uh, this, the reason for that is that this particular function only has one cross-reference. But if we had uh, an example with more cross-references, uh, for example, let's test this one out, this one. We can see that it has two, right? But IDA, uh, by default, only displays a few cross-references. If you want to see more of these, and maybe your function has a uh, little more than two cross reference you, says you can modify that setting in options general cross references and by changing the number of displayed xrefs in the cross references tab for me this value is set to three but again i've also discussed the shortcuts with you to view the cross references in real time i hope this video was uh, beneficial to you all and you've learned something and that cross-references are helpful to you in your analysis using IDA Pro. Thank you very much. Please do leave your valuable feedback in the comments below.